Hello and welcome to GameSack. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles got their start back in 1984 with some edgy black and white comics. Well, edgy for their time anyway. Suffice it to say, the franchise is still going strong today. And I'm here to talk about the Turtles video games. And boy, oh boy, are there a ton of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles games out there on about a thousand different platforms. But I've got 25 of them to show you on consoles here today. So let's do this in chronological order. The first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game was released in 1989 on the NES from Konami. This is one of the few Turtles games that's single player only. There was a rumor that this started life as a different game but was reskinned for the Turtles midway through its development after Konami got the license. Anyway, you wander around the overhead areas making your way to the next side scrolling level. During these stages, you can choose from any of the four Turtles, each having their own life bar. Of course, they all have their own unique weapons to help you take out your foes. You sometimes even have challenges on the overhead parts, so you can often just avoid them. This one got a bad rap for the longest time because it wasn't a beat-em-up like the later games. People just look back on it as inferior. But honestly, for the most part, I think it's pretty good. It's far from perfect though, as some of the collision is hardly fair, but even with that, it's a great game that everyone should try. I mean, try it a few times actually, just to make sure you get used to how it plays. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles came to the arcades also in 1989 and also from Konami. This beat em up allowed up to four players to battle simultaneously, one person for each turtle. This was an amazing game for its time and it's still great fun today. There's often a ton of enemies on screen but they all go down pretty quickly. The bosses are the main villains from the early seasons of the 1987 cartoon show and some of them even feature a fairly respectable impression of the voices. Make a plan, Say your prayers, titles. The graphics are nice and the animation is excellent. The music is great and the sound effects are fun. Overall, the game is a touch short, but that's nothing unique among arcade beat-em-ups. This was released towards the end of 1989, but it was the top grossing arcade machine in both the US and the UK for 1990. And for damn good reason too. This one is a definite winner. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles showed up on the Game Boy in Fall of the Foot Clan in 1990. This is a side-scrolling action game. It's generally pretty slow, but for its time this was lots of fun, especially considering that it's a portable game. You get four lives, one for each turtle. Your mission is to rescue April who's always getting kidnapped because, well, she's so hot I guess. I mean, what's Shredder's agenda anyway? Kidnapping April won't help him conquer the world, yet he always does it. Anyway, for some reason, the buttons default to jump being B, so change it if you like the jump button being to the right of your attack button like I do. The graphics and scrolling are very well done for an early-ish Game Boy game. The music is fairly nice as well. It's still enjoyable these days, so I recommend giving it a go if you can. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game, came home to the NES in late 1990. This is a port of the first arcade game, but it was marketed as a sequel to the original NES game so kids and parents wouldn't get confused about it. As a port, it's not bad, and they even managed to keep the two-player simultaneous feature which is somewhat rare on the console. There are fewer on-screen enemies, but they're tougher. Not only that, but they even added an extra level because Konami loves you. If that wasn't enough, the game is rife with exclusive references to Pizza Hut, and it even came with a coupon for a free personal pan pizza. Because, you know, the turtles love pizza, and you should too if you want to be like them. I want to be a turtle. Good graphics and nice music around this one out. The 
Turtles returned to the arcades in 1991 with Turtles in Time. This is a great follow-up to the first arcade game. Things seem normal until the end of the third stage, where Shredder appears out of nowhere and zaps you back through time for no reason whatsoever. He also zaps about a thousand of his henchmen to keep fighting you in different time periods. Great writing and character motivations are not something the series is generally known for, so of course we can just let the plot slide. But the time travel mechanic gives the game more varied scenery to fight through. You'll almost always be overwhelmed by a ton of enemies, especially in the upper levels. But you can do it, and it's worth it since it's so fun. This one is not only based on the 1987 cartoon, but it has some bosses from The Secret of the Ooze, which was the second live-action movie. Sadly, Vanilla Ice is nowhere in this game. The graphics are very colorful and better than the first arcade game. You can now throw enemies at the screen, and it uses the arcade board's super powerful scaling function to make it look as smooth as silk. And damn is silk smooth! The music is awesome and a huge step up over the first arcade game. There's a ton of extraordinarily catchy and honestly timeless tunes here. There are tons of voices as well, though a few might become annoying after a bit. Now I'm too cool. Overall, I personally prefer this one over the first arcade game, mainly because of the music. Late 1991 and early 1992, the world got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, The Manhattan Project on the NES. No, this isn't about Shredder developing an atomic bomb. Instead, he somehow levitates Manhattan and kidnaps April for the sole reason of coaxing you to come after him. He has some issues. This is an original game and not based on an arcade at all. This one doesn't get talked about as much, but it's still a great beat-em-up. My main issue with it would be that there are a lot of enemies and bosses which have tough-to-avoid attacks that'll toss you across the entire screen, and it gets old pretty fast. Otherwise, the control is mostly spot-on. Each turtle, of course, has a special move that is done by pressing both A and B at the same time, taking off one bar of your health meter. Sometimes I found myself doing this accidentally, but that's on me. The graphics are super nice, and I love the scrolling as they attempt to surf from Florida to New York. <laughs> That's gonna be a long trip, boys. Wow, sure looks like the city's been slacking on their bridge maintenance. This game has great music as well, and some of it's even from Turtles in Time. Don't overlook this one. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 Back from the Sewers on the Game Boy was the next release in 1992. This is another side-scrolling action game that expands on the first one. You can now grapple on the ceiling if there's one, and you can also jump up and down between different levels. Sometimes you can move around the screen just like a beat-em-up. The action is still pretty slow. It's still good, and it gives you more to do than the first Game Boy game did. The graphics are far more detailed here, but they've lost any parallax scrolling that the first game had. The turtles themselves have very simplified artwork. They just look derpy and they don't animate much at all. I don't like it. The music is once again pretty good. You certainly won't be wasting your time if you choose to spend it playing this game. I've actually been a Turtles fan forever. The comics were cool, and I really loved the 1987 cartoon. In fact, I took one of the drawings of Raphael from the comic and redrew it myself, adding a couple of the details from the cartoon, like the monogrammed belt buckle. I think it came out pretty good. In fact, I did a lot of drawings of the different Turtles. I loved them. Despite this, I never bought any of the toys, not even one. As a toy, they just didn't really appeal to me. I just loved the characters. Anyway, let's get back to the games. In 1992, we got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4, Turtles in Time for the Super NES. 
This, of course, is a port of the Turtles in Time arcade game and probably the video game most people are familiar with when it comes to the Turtles. At least, people that matter, you know? It's generally an excellent port of the arcade game, though the animation has been cut back, a ton of voice samples are missing, a few enemies and bosses are missing, and the throw animation is comparatively gimped. Don't let that get you down, though, as they added so much more. Like the NES port of the first arcade game, this one adds an extra level, the Technodrome. This is a beefy level which has an elevator stage, which is a staple of beat-em-ups. The boss fight here is against Shredder, and it actually gives purpose to throwing the enemies at the screen. You need to toss them at Shredder to defeat him. Nothing like this happened in the arcade. After this battle, he gets mad and sends you through time, which makes a lot more sense than how the arcade handled it. And now you get to fight Bebop and Rocksteady appropriately dressed up for the time period because of course they've got to blend in, otherwise they might get noticed. Bebop and Rocksteady weren't in the arcade. Also new are life meters for each boss. Normally, Konami Arcade beat-em-up bosses flash more and more the weaker they are. These bosses still do that, but the actual life meter is quite welcome. Gone is the glue boss from the arcade. Or at least I think he was supposed to be glue, I don't know. He looks like glue. Maybe he's supposed to be mud, but he's not brown, I don't know. The Neon Knight Rider stage is now Mode 7 for absolutely no reason at all. Well, no other reason than Mode 7 being wicked sweet, that is. The gameplay has even been rebalanced and is far less annoying. The music is once again excellent, and it's simultaneously almost as good as the arcade, and yet better. However, there are more musical selections in this one, and the new stuff is superb. Overall, I've got to say that this game, this version right here, is probably one of the top five beat-em-ups ever made. Also in 1992, Turtles in Time showed up on the Genesis as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Hyperstone Heist. Well, kind of. This is a reimagining of Turtles in Time without the time traveling aspect, but it reuses a ton of assets from that game. First off, this one has half the memory of the Super NES game. Most of the stages here are reskins of the ones from Turtles in Time. This stage seems to be based on level 3 from the first arcade game. This one is a good redress of a similar stage in Manhattan Project on the NES. Can you remember way back when I was talking about that one? The graphics are killer Della, and the scrolling as they attempt to surf from Florida to New York will make you flip your wig. Those chaps sure have a long way to go, see? So don't snap your cap. Anyway, it looks better here. I think the Genesis probably has better hardware than the NES. There is one wholly original stage here, and that's stage 3, Shredder's Hideout. There's a boss rush stage here that reuses the background from the last part of stage 2. It's never exciting to see a boss rush as that's evidence a game is creatively bankrupt. Even with this here though, this one is really short. It plays well though, almost as well as the Super NES game. Unfortunately, you can't throw your enemies at the screen. The graphics run in the console's low resolution mode since it uses assets from the Super Nintendo game, but otherwise they look okay. Almost all of the music is from Turtles in Time, and for the most part, the renditions of these tunes turned out really well. This is a great game, but you can tell Konami really didn't care about making it stand out. Someone decided that the Turtles needed a one-on-one -on -one fighting game, so we got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters in 1993. Three different versions of it, actually. This here is the Super Nintendo version. In the story mode, you can choose to play as one of the four Turtles. You then have one-on-one -on -one fights against some bad guys. After each fight, you'll get a cutscene with a bit of English. One-on-one -on -one fighting games have never been Konami's forte, and this is... well, it's okay. The enemy can block your fierce attacks indefinitely without even taking a pixel of damage to their life bar. It's definitely nowhere near as nuanced as a Capcom or SNK fighting game. There's a tournament mode where you can choose from more characters, but it's much more unforgiving. Also, it feels like half the screen is taken up by giant black bars on top of everything, which is pretty sad. Surely the Super Nintendo is powerful enough to fill the entire screen. This game certainly doesn't believe it can. 
Otherwise, the graphics are great with nice color. The music is pretty good, and I like how this game sounds quite a bit. Overall, I'm not much of a fan of this one, but it had potential. The Genesis also got tournament fighters in 1993, and this is a different game from the Super NES one, though it's still a one-on-one -on -one fighter. This one has a slightly different character roster, and you can even choose to play as April. Hell, she might be the best fighter in the entire game. That's about as interesting as this one gets, though. You have one button for punch and the other for kick. In order to do strong attacks, you must press in the direction of your opponent. The C button taunts, and the 6 button controller isn't used at all. The gameplay sucks, to put it simply. Your moves are ineffective and your reach is strangely poor if you choose to play as any of the turtles. The graphics are decent. I like how the shadows are actually transparent and not solid black or worse, flickering black. There's no line scrolling floor here though. At least it takes up the entire screen unlike the other versions. The music excels at being mediocre. The composer actually did some amazing games like Gradius 3, but you'd never know it by listening to this one. Tournament Fighters came to the NES in 1994 and was Konami's last game on the console. This version is pretty basic, but it's still impressive that they managed to make a fighting game work decently on the console. The NES controller is far from ideal for fighting games, but it's easy enough to pull off most of the moves. There's occasionally a ball that will drop that you can use as a special power. The graphics are okay, actually pretty good for the NES. The floor has some nice line scrolling, but there is a serious lack of locales, and a large portion of the bottom of the screen is reserved for the Turtles logo. At least the music is decent. This one isn't great, but I'd say it's a little better than the Genesis version. Turtle showed up for one last hurrah on the Game Boy with Radical Rescue in 1993. Unlike the other games, here you can only play as Michelangelo, at least at first. The other turtles have been kidnapped along with April and you have to rescue everyone. And guess what? It's a Metroidvania! It's just that there's no Metroid and no Castlevania at all. That's my favorite kind of Metroidvania. The action is now a lot faster and each turtle has their own special moves. You'd think this would be great, but it actually sucks really bad. I'm just kidding, this one is actually pretty good all things considered. It's fun getting somewhere new using a turtle special ability that you didn't have a few minutes before. You'll be accessing the map a lot, and I wish they showed the doors to each room like they do in the Castlevania games. It can be easy to take damage in this one, especially since there are a lot of off-screen hazards and blind jumps. What really sucks though is that all of the turtles share a life bar, and if one of them dies, you have to continue from the last password point. Hell, at least there are passwords, I guess. The graphics are more plain than the other Turtles Game Boy games, and the characters are smaller, but that's perfectly okay. Especially when the action is faster, like it is here. The music is good, and fitting for an exploratory game like this. This is a surprisingly deep game for the system to spend some time with, though I think save states might make it even better if you're playing the game in a way that allows that. Every single game I've talked about up to this point is included in the Kawabunga Collection, which is a 2022 release. In addition to all the games, you can switch their regions, and it has a bunch of bonus material. I couldn't get my hands on a copy when I was making this video because, well, it's not out yet, so I can't tell you how good the emulation is. But I figured that I'd let everyone know that this exists, and it's probably a great way to play these games on modern consoles. Ten years and an entire generation of consoles would come and go before the Turtles would have another video game. That happened in 2003 with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for GameCube, PlayStation 2, Xbox, and PC. This is the GameCube version here. As you can imagine, the gameplay is in 3D, since by this time, that was the norm. It's also based on the cartoon reboot that happened not long before this. Basically, you and the turtle you're controlling are trapped in a limited amount of space. 
After you beat up all of the enemies in that space, you're granted the ability to move on and fight more enemies. It's a similar concept to a 2D beat-em-up, it's just far less energetic. It's still not bad at all though. Each turtle has his own set of stages to complete, or rather his own unique progression through the game, and you'll need to go through it with each turtle if you really want to beat it. Unfortunately, the repetition starts to set in a little faster with this one. Thankfully, the game can be saved, so you don't have to do it all in one go. The graphics are cell shaded and look great for their time, and still fairly nice today. Sadly, Progressive Scan isn't supported on any of the consoles unless you find alternate means of forcing it, like I'm doing here with Swiss. The music is decent, but forgettable, and the one-liners are probably going to get on your nerves after a bit. It's still worth trying. Around this same time, we also got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on the Game Boy Advance. This is a 2D beat-em-up that takes place on a single axis or plane. You start by choosing your turtle. Once again, each turtle has his own story and set of stages to play through. The action is decent, but not as tight as the 16-bit or even 8-bit Turtles games. Each turtle has a special thing that they can do, like Donatello jumping across large chasms, or Raphael climbing up walls with his size. Michelangelo's idle animation has him spinning his nunchucks. You'd think that you could just stand there and smack the enemy away, but no, they apparently go right through them unless you're pressing a button. Fortunately, the game saves after each act. The graphics are nice, with some good color and some great scrolling here and there. The animation also ain't too shabby. This is a good companion title for the 3D game, I suppose, but it certainly doesn't have the same lasting impression as the older games do. So what's up with that whole Heroes in a Half Shell thing? I mean, clearly they have a full entire shell. Well, one explanation is, is that the cartoon is serving you up heroes, kind of like they serve oysters in a restaurant, you know, on a half shell. Another explanation could be that they adapted it from skater slang, you know, like half pipe, half shell. I don't know about that one. Actually, I don't know about either of them. It just makes for a catchy lyric, I guess. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 Battle Nexus came out in 2004 for the GameCube, PlayStation 2, Xbox, DS, and PC. Once again, this is the GameCube version. The action is somewhat similar to the first Turtles reboot game as it's a 3D action beat-em-up. This one isn't as fun though. Up to four players can play at once. You can select the order of your turtles and switch between them at any time with the press of a button when you're standing still. You all share a life bar. Some parts of any given stage will need a certain turtle to do his thing before you can advance. The controls are extremely laggy, especially jumping, at least on the GameCube version. The horrible camera angles that often happen do not make jumping any easier. The graphics though are decent, and once again progressive scan is not supported. There are judicious amounts of full motion video, and that means the GameCube version here is divided onto two discs. Overall, I think this was a step backwards when it comes to enjoyment. No fair attacking from way up there! In 2005, we got TMNT Mutant Melee for the GameCube, Xbox, PlayStation 2, and PC. This is a 3D fighting game, kinda. Actually, maybe it's better described as a dollar store Smash Brothers. You can choose from a bunch of different characters and unlock even more, which is cool. Each area has its own rules. You may need to earn the most points or get the most knockouts or what have you. There's always four players and it can get pretty chaotic. Not really my thing. There's also a story mode, which is equally boring to me. The graphics are sharp and progressive scan is actually supported this time. Again, this isn't my type of game, but if you like Smash Brothers, then why not give it a go? Uh, so maybe I'll just stop 
beating you up now. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 Mutant Nightmare came to the Xbox, GameCube, PlayStation 3, and DS, also in 2005. This is the Xbox version here. Finally, they seem to have gotten it right, well mostly. The controls are set up in a similar way to Part 2, but they're much more fluid and smooth now with significantly less lag. Once again, up to four players can play, but no matter what, all four turtles will be on screen at all times. The CPU controls the others. Believe it or not, they're actually helpful. If any one of you gets a life up, you all benefit simultaneously. It can get a little chaotic sometimes as it's easy to lose track of which turtle you are for a second or two, but it's no big deal. There are four episodes each with a ton of different missions. Many of them can be pretty short, so it won't get overbearingly repetitious. Not only that, but there's a lot of variety in the stages to keep you interested. There's no progressive scan option for the graphics, which is odd since Mutant Melee had one and it came out earlier. Once again, the GameCube version is on two discs thanks to all of the FMV. The music is hit and miss. Some of it's pretty good and other parts can be pretty repetitive. But like I said, the stages aren't crazy long, so it's not a huge issue. Anyway, give this one a try. It has a lot to offer. In 2007, Ubisoft took over the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles license and we got TMNT. That's right, just TMNT. It was available for the GameCube, PlayStation 2, PC, DS, PSP, Wii, and the Xbox 360. Yeah, this was everywhere. This is the GameCube version. This is based on the CG movie from that same year. It's kind of an acrobatic platformer like those Prince of Persia games from around the same time. The control of these maneuvers is okay. Well, except for Donatello, he can bite me. Of course, each turtle has their own abilities. Fighting enemies is actually the least interesting aspect of this one. It feels weak and more like an afterthought. The visuals are extremely grainy. Look at this nasty banding here. It's almost gross to look at. The game is letterboxed and there's no anamorphic widescreen option on the non-HD consoles. You're also not allowed to play it in 4x3. Nothing special here, moving along. There was also a version for the Game Boy Advance released around that same time called TMNT, unsurprisingly. This is different than the other game of that same name as it's a return to the conventional beat-em-up genre. Anyone looking for that old-school Konami action will probably be at least slightly disappointed in this one. It reminds me a lot of that Scott Pilgrim vs. The World game, probably for good reason since it's made by the same developer, Ubisoft Montreal. This came out three years earlier though and it lacks the strides that they made by the time they got around to making that one. What is cool though is that you can choose a second turtle as a summon move. Once the gauge in the upper right fills up, tap a shoulder button and bring them in for a quick special attack. You can also pick up dropped weapons and use them briefly instead of your own. Unfortunately, the levels here can be rather uninteresting and overlong, which makes it easy for your attention to drift away. The graphics are nice, though there's not a ton of variety in any given stage. And why is bread life up and not pizza? Have the designers ever watched a turtle show? The animation is great though, and it has that weird, rubbery, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World the game look. The sound and music are a joke. It's super thin sounding, and if this is something that you can jam to, well, I wouldn't want to ride with you in your car. Despite what I say, I think you should give it a go and try it for yourself. In 2009, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Smash Up came to the PlayStation 2 and Wii. This is the PlayStation 2 version. Surprisingly, this one was developed by Game Arts. You know, the guys behind Lunar. And it's another Smash Brothers clone. It's definitely better than Mutant Melee, but certainly not an outstanding game in its own right. 
I like that you have normal life bars that make sense instead of whatever it is that Smash Brothers does. There are items that you can grab which can temporarily affect you. The action here is decently responsive, but unsurprisingly I often found myself facing the wrong direction. There's a true anamorphic widescreen option here, but it just pillar boxes the action in a 4x3 ratio anyway, except for the cutscenes. So on both consoles, you want to choose 4x3 just to get the most resolution and detail. There's not a whole lot more to say about this one. Okay, I've got four more games to show you. That's right, four. One, two, three, four. Don't count this one, four. And I'm not gonna lie, they start out pretty bad. But the good news is, is that they get progressively better than the last game. And speaking of the last game, well, now nah, you'll see. Activision got the rights to the franchise and brought out Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in 2013 for the Wii, Xbox 360, and 3DS. I'm playing it on the Xbox 360 here. This one was developed by an outfit called Magic Pockets. The turtles themselves have been redesigned once again, this time taking a huge step back in the process and seemingly aimed more towards very young children. This is definitely the worst turtles game that exists, at least that I've personally played. Once again, all four turtles are on screen at once and you can even switch between them at any time. The other three sometimes help, but usually they just stand there while you do all the work. And it's definitely work, not fun. The enemy just keeps coming and coming and the fighting here is so incredibly boring. The only thing decent is that you can upgrade your moves between the levels. The gameplay is bad, the graphics are bad, and the sound and music are, well, guess what, they're bad. In fact, a lot of the dialogue is recorded way too loud and it has a bit of distortion and it sounds, well, bad. I got it! Team Butt Kick! Or Team Face Smash! Yeah! Was this made in someone's garage? Okay, that was incredibly mediocre. Seriously, just don't play this one, ever. Whoa, I thought sewage was supposed to go down, not up. Towards the end of 2014, we got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Danger of the Ooze, once again from Activision. This is on the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and 3DS. This is the PS3 version. This one was developed by WayForward and is a huge improvement over the last game. This one's another Metroidvania, and the map system and overall Metroidvania-ness is definitely more Metroidvania than Radical Rescue on the Game Boy. You might even confuse this for a real Metroid or Castlevania game. Actually, you won't. The DNA of a good game is all here, but it's held back by its attack system. Your turtles will often start spinning their weapons continuously after pressing the attack button two or three times. The tutorial says that you're supposed to hold the attack button down for this to happen, but no, it does it on its own. This makes attacking enemies a huge chore and nowhere near as fun as it could and should be. How they could mess this up is beyond me, but they certainly did. It's too bad too, because otherwise this game has so much potential. The graphics are okay, but the music is certainly much better than the previous game. In fact, it's probably the game's strongest asset. When it comes down to it, I'd rather play Radical Rescue on the Game Boy. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutants in Manhattan was released in 2016 for the PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, Xbox One, and PC. This is the PlayStation 4 version here. It was once again published by Activision, but developed by Platinum Games. Once again, this is better than the previous entry that I just talked about. And like a lot of these other more modern releases, all four turtles are with you at all times. You can switch between them, but the controls are pretty convoluted. Actually, that's an understatement, but they still work well enough to manage playing the game. The action feels really good in this one. You have light and strong attacks, you can double jump and even glide down with a parachute, and you have items assigned to the D-pad. 
The game is usually free roaming and you'll often have to engage your tea glass to find out where you need to go next. If you get knocked out, another turtle can revive you and you should do the same for your brothers. If not, you're banished back to the turtle's lair to eat pizza until you regain enough strength, then back to the battle you go. Just try not to have all four turtles out at once. Besides fighting, you'll find yourself rolling things around stages from point A to point B, disarming bombs, lots and lots of bombs, and querying computer terminals for more info. You'll be doing these things a lot. Platinum Games is known for nothing if not their love of extreme repetition. Still, this game is fun if you don't play it too much in one sitting. One nice thing is that the game doesn't need much of an install and it doesn't require updates, at least on the PS4 anyway. It's super weird having a modern game where you can actually jump in and start playing right away. The cell shaded graphics are excellent here on the PS4. However, I absolutely despise how the characters look. I usually enjoy playing as Donatello, but look at him. I'd be embarrassed to play as a turtle who looks like this. Only Raphael has a somewhat decent design and he still looks like ass. I swear, the turtle designs just get worse and worse. What's up with that? Say your prayers, turtles. The music is okay and sometimes extremely repetitive, which again is something that Platinum Games loves. April is your radio buddy because every modern game needs a radio buddy. I think I've located some enemy hideouts. Go check them out. Overall, this is probably the best 3D Turtles game, but it's got nothing on the best 2D offerings that came before it. Well and after, keep watching. Nice job, guys. They have partial data on Rock City's location. If we can get a bit more, I'll know exactly where he's hiding. Finally, we have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge from .mu, or Dotemu, 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 I don't know. This 2022 release is available for the Switch, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. I'm playing it on the Switch here. I've saved the best for last, folks. This just might be as good as it gets. This one is based on the 1987 cartoon, and that's where most, if not all, of the characters come from. I don't know, I haven't seen every episode. Gameplay-wise, it's a beat-em-up and it takes most of its inspiration from the Super NES version of Turtles in Time. This is a huge game. There are 16 stages, which is twice as many as games of this nature tend to have. What's more is that each stage is significantly longer than a typical beat-em-up stage. On top of that, there are optional side missions that you can do in the story mode. The game saves, so you don't have to do it all in one sitting, at least in the story mode. The arcade mode is tougher and you can't save your progress. The control is simple and effective. It's very similar to Turtles in Time, but now you have an extra button to roll away from danger and yet another for a super attack when you fill up your gauge. This can be played by up to six players simultaneously, but supposedly only four on the PlayStation 4. This can be achieved locally or online. I didn't initially plan to play online as I captured this video, it just kind of happened. It can get chaotic, but it's the good kind of chaos. Sometimes the frame rate will take a hit, even with only one other player. Sometimes weird things may happen, like what's going on here? Other people can jump in at any time if you allow it, just like an arcade machine. I think I'd rather play local co-op though, or at least with people I know online. I like that fatigue and boredom never really sets in like it does by the fifth or sixth stage in most other beat-em-ups. The graphics are 2D pixel art excellence. There is a lot of detail in the various scenes and it never becomes repetitive to look at. I like that there are a lot of fun things going on in the background and right outside of the action for you to enjoy. The animation is also great, but not rubbery like Scott Pilgrim. Lots of parallax and tons of bright colors really heighten the visuals. The original voice cast from the 1987 cartoon lend their voices here and that's awesome. I died. <laughs> well, except Shredder. Rest in peace, Uncle Phil. The music is outstanding, and it'll make you want to turn the volume way up. Unless you hate good music. There are some great songs in addition to the instrumental stuff. The game isn't completely perfect though. The thing that probably annoyed me the most is that the game lets you know when you didn't meet a challenge. I don't need to know that as I'm playing. Trophy and achievement notifications are annoying as it is. Can you imagine if you got notified every time you didn't get a trophy or an achievement? All that information should be between the stages. 
Next, there are a couple of self-scrolling stages in the game, and I feel they go on for much too long. These stages are just less interesting, so I feel that they should be shorter. Anyway, be sure to check this one out. It's a great return to form in more ways than one, and yes, it's available physically. And there you go, that was every single Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game ever made, except for the ones I didn't cover. My favorites have got to be Turtles in Time on the Super Nintendo, as well as Shredder's Revenge. What are your favorites? Do you have any least favorites? Let me know. In the meantime, thank you for watching GameSack. Now. <laughs> 